One of the most paradoxically simple and complex things about the structure of DNA is how it replicates. DNA replication is how DNA makes an exact copy of itself, which it needs to do before the cell divides. In this video, I'll focus largely on the DNA replication in prokaryotes. To understand DNA replication clearly, it helps to understand the structure of DNA. The nucleotide is the base unit of the DNA molecule, which is made of phosphate, deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. This base is adenine, but there is also thymine, guanine, and cytosine. The nucleotides covalently bond to the other nucleotides at the sugar and at the phosphate. The five carbon atoms of the deoxyribose sugar are numbered like this, one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. Nitrogenous bases always attach to the one prime carbon, and phosphates attach at the three prime and five prime carbons of the sugar. Nucleotides can only be added in the three prime end of another nucleotide. Because of this, bases are added in the five prime to three prime direction of the DNA molecule. So on this bit of DNA, the three prime ends have the sugar and the five prime ends have the phosphate molecule. The two strands of DNA are anti-parallel. So the five prime and three prime ends are opposite in each strand. Now that we've reviewed some important DNA information, we can look at DNA replication. At the start of DNA replication, DNA gyrase and DNA helicase work together to unzip and stabilize the DNA. Helicase unzips the DNA by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the bases. But because DNA is helical and can also be supercoiled, DNA gyrase is used to help relieve the twisting torsional strain of unwinding the DNA. As DNA gyrase and helicase move along the DNA strand to unzip the DNA, single-stranded binding proteins will attach to the unzipped strands to prevent them from re-annealing. There are now two open strands of DNA to be replicated. In order to initiate replication, DNA primase generates short RNA primers on each strand. These provide a binding site for DNA polymerase 3, which will covalently join the free nucleotides on the newly forming complementary strands. DNA polymerase 3 can only add nucleotides to the 3' prime end of a primer, so it must move in the 3 to 5' prime direction. DNA polymerase 3 can work continuously on the leading strand, but it works in discontinuous sections, called Okazaki fragments, on the lagging strand. Now the last thing to fix on the DNA are those RNA primers that were placed at the beginning by DNA primase. DNA polymerase 1 removes RNA primers and replaces them with DNA. There are still unjoined nucleotides between the Okazaki fragments, so DNA ligase will covalently join the fragments together. And now we have two identical strands of DNA. In summary, DNA gyrase and helicase work to unwind and unzip the two strands of DNA. Single-stranded binding proteins keep the strands from re-annealing. DNA primase adds RNA primers so that DNA polymerase 3 can bind and join the free nucleotides. DNA polymerase 1 removes the RNA primer and replaces it with DNA, and DNA ligase joins the Okazaki fragments by covalent bonds. Scientists can learn the sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's of DNA by stopping DNA replication. They use dideoxyribonucleic acid, which cannot make covalent bonds and stops replication. Small amounts of dideoxyribonucleic acid with the different bases are added to normal PCR mixtures and will be incorporated into the DNA, but when they are, they stop the replication, creating fragments. Gel electrophoresis separates the fragments to determine the base sequences according to ascending sequence length. 
and machines can automatically determine the sequence if the dyed deoxyribonucleotides are fluorescently labeled. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.